okay? Sorry, I machined this side off camera, but it's nothing special. It's just, just turned down this diameter and faced off um, this, the face of the wealth box. And as you can see, this, um, this port here, I couldn't get in with the um, lathe tool bit to, f to turn it completely down otherwise I would uh, have hit the valve box we will have to do that on the milling machine later but the machining with the glued on piece went very well now I can take it out of the chuck and get back to the bench and release this uh, plug we will heat it up until the, the Loctite loses its uh, strength and hopefully it should fall out with some um, percussive help. Okay, I got my um, temperature crayons out and um, last time I used these I got a lot of questions. These are thermochrome made by Castellin, uh, made in Germany, but I think um, they are. All, I, I'm not sure if these are still produced. Um, they range from 100 degrees C up to 600 degrees C, and if you normally buy them, they are pretty expensive for some reason. Um, and now we will use them uh, when we heat up this part to get out the the steel slug in the center. Um, I don't want to heat this casting over 200 degrees. I have a brass knocker here that I can use to convince it if it's uh, stuck. I have a heavy leather gel glove for my left hand so I can hold the piece while I knock on it. Yeah, I know the leather glove is not perfect for this application. <laughs> this will hurt if it gets hot, but um, 200 degrees is not too bad. We're just heating up the part. Okay, we have 100 degrees right now. When I use the crayon, which is green, and I draw a line on there, it changes color to blue. So that means we are at about 100 degrees C. This is 150 degrees and it's, it's barely changing color but I just hear the... There we go, there the, the lock time released. There it goes. And it dropped out. So the temperature crayons of course gave us a good idea where we are at with the temperature. I don't trust the IR thermometers. They are when you're measuring against a uh, metallic reflective surface they are uh, pretty unreliable. Okay, I rechecked the part. Now as it, as it has cooled down now we can touch it again. Uh, I checked it on the freshly machined surface and I had a pair of parallels behind it in the three char chuck to align it parallel with the world and uh, what else yeah now we will face this thing to length 54 millimeters is the dimension we're shooting for and then we will machine the outer diameter. But to machine the outer diameter, as this is a pretty interrupted cut here and here, um, I will not rely on the three char chuck alone. Um, I will support the piece with the tail stuck, but there is nothing to support as this piece is of course bored out. Um, 
I machined this plug out of Delrin, black Delrin. This goes snugly into the bore. Then we will center drill it and then we can support the cylinder with the tailstock with a life center. And then we can machine like like we like we want. Um, it's not going to move on us. So let's 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 face this off. Okay, let's face this carefully off not produce any scrap and you can still see uh, the blue Loctite, the remaining Loctite in there. We will wash that later off of acetone, but right in the moment it doesn't bother us. Uh, so let's bring in the tool just to find a high spot. Okay, there we go. Now we can zero our dial indicator on the machine's bed. Dial in 3 tenths of a millimeter cut and go for it. Uh, let's okay, this was very uneventful. Let's give it another 3 tenths. take a measurement over a length. This is a caliper dimension and um, I can, yeah, I would measure it with um, with mics but I can't reach in behind the part and uh, between the part and the chuck so I have to rely on the good old Mito Toyos. And we have and for when you're measuring with the calipers when you're measuring like like this with your finger pushing on it, this is yeah, that's okay. That's the stand. That's the normal way to do measuring. When you go and you hold your fingers on the contact areas where you are measuring, that increases the accuracy of a of a, of a digital or a dial caliper pretty much. And we have 54.76 millimeters, so we have 0.76 millimeters to go. And take a nice. Facing cut. Okay, we faced off the end to the final length and we can take another measurement. And I will again apply the pressure to the directly at the measuring points, and we have 54. Mm -hmm. Now we will use our um, plastic plug and shove it up in the hole. And as this is pretty tight, we'll have to convince it slightly, and we'll just push it in with the with the tailstock. See, didn't hurt. Now we take a center drill and put in a nice big center so you can support the cylinder with the life uh, with the life center yes That's. There we go life center bring in the tailstock there we go, now this is a proper, nice, rigid setup that we can use and work with. Um, and don't have to worry that this piece might get levered out of the jaws. Uh, yeah, now we'll turn down this diameter. And I think that's the last, last operation on the lathe for this part. Okay, another different camera angle and now we machine this down. We have to be careful, there is a lot of interrupted cut on this part. Now 
Okay, now we have a, a full diameter all around. 50.98. We will verify that with the mic. Fifty point four eight. No, fifty point nine eight. Sorry, that's the uh, fifty, fifty point five, and there is fifty one minus uh, uh, two and a half uh, hundreds of a millimeter, something like that. Turning on. More speed. Okay, and I pulled the tool out to, to, to um, define the surface, just to take a first uh, skin pass on it. Now we will change to a radi uh, lathe tool with a nice radius and finish this, uh, this surface here. Okay. This uh, distance here. It should later be uh, 34 millimeters, as um, the overall length of this thing is 54 millimeters, and the step from the valve box to the face is 10 millimeters. So this should be uh, 34 in the end, and right now we are at. 35 and that's fine as we have still one millimeter to go okay. Let's do this in two cuts. I will dial in point 8.9 millimeters and then take a finishing cut with point one That looks looks pretty darn good. Uh, the surface is not not too bad. This diameter is very clean, and of course this um, of course this port up here is again cut in half. But we will fix that on the milling machine. Uh, so far, I'm pretty happy. And yes, there is one little spot that didn't clean up. Uh, yeah, I will chamfer that corner and I think there is not much to be seen after that. Okay, I think we come to an end for this episode and I spot face the, um, these ports here on the milling machine. I just, just hold it in the vise like this. I spot face them with a two, 12 millimeter end mill and I center drilled or spot drilled for the threads that will go in there, but I didn't want to dr to drill and tap them right now. I will do that later in the process. But as you can see, that we have come pretty far uh, until now. We have almost all the castings, with the exception for the valve box cover, um, at least started to machine. Um, almost all the important surfaces are machined. Uh, there is still a lot to uh, to machine on this uh, on the steam engine, but uh, I think we have ha had pretty good uh, progress so far. And uh, yeah, we will continue on with this build. Thank you for watching. See you next time.